Welcome everybody to our next uh, webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. A warm welcome in the name of JFT Brokers as well. My name, as always, for those kind of webinars, <coughs> Stefan, um, Stefan Friedrichowski. I know it's a real complicated last name, um, but anyhow, just call me Stefan uh, if you have any questions. If you want to get in touch with me via email, you see already my email address here on the first slide. <coughs> And if I talk about slides, um, as always, you can download the slides of today's webinar uh, directly via the go to webinar control panel. Um, and then you have direct access to the slides as well. Later, I will show some Excel sheets. If you have interest in those, just send me an email <clears throat> and uh, I will make sure that you will get those Excel sheets uh, directly. A few other remarks here today because I see a lot of new names. Um, you find um, the recordings of the webinar on the JFD YouTube channel uh, from tomorrow morning um, onwards. Uh, and as well, all the other webinars uh, of my colleagues in French, in Italian, in German, um, you find on the JFD YouTube channel as well. Interesting topics, different speakers. So. Um, yeah, it's a big bundle of uh, recordings. Um, that's true for all of us and uh, with a strong history up to now. The topic today, a purely statistically derived trading strategy. That sounds strange. And indeed, you may call it a little, little bit weird. Uh, I know that. And later, the one or the other may say, oh, hmm, I don't see charts, I don't see resistance lines, something like that. No, exactly today you will not see anything like that. You will see indeed some mess um, and we do some statistical analysis of um, different underlyings and out of that kind of analysis we can directly derive a trading strategy. So I know um, it's not the usual topic. It's, um, as I mentioned, a little bit weird. And I have to, to admit the idea behind that kind of strategy and indeed <clears throat> doing the math, the calculations of that, yeah, I, have, I have done in my hammock. That's my favorite place in the evening. And then I had an idea and um, yeah, I took a pencil and um, wrote down some equations. And finally, I got a strategy. Um, and I will share with you that that uh, funny document <clears throat> later during the webinar. So maybe you enjoy it, maybe not. Hopefully you do. Otherwise, you find a lot of other pure, normal kind of strategies uh, in the recordings um, and on the JFD YouTube channel if you are interested in more specific um, trading strategies. I would like to announce already that in two weeks we have something really special. Then we will talk about the JFD Basket Investor. That is a bundle of strategies. We, we go through them and you will see. Then you have something in hand um, you can even follow directly via JFD. And um, I will go really behind the scene to tell you what's within that basket, what in the portfolio and how to set up a portfolio. Uh, you will learn during that webinar as well. But that's in two weeks from now. Okay. As always, I have to show one um, time here that uh, with disclaimer, because we talk about trading strategies, but finally, <clears throat> when you trade, you always trade on your own, your own risk, your own irresponsibility. That's, I think, obvious and self-explaining. So I have done that um, as always. So in details of topics of today, um, since we go in in really in some equations and <laughs> um, I want to have a little bit of motivation first and I will, uh, next slide is already the equity curve of uh, the strategy. It's um, three weeks ago that I <clears throat> derived that strategy. Now I have uh, results already, traded results uh, for two weeks. And um, yeah, I will share that. Um, it was a little bit of an experiment to, to, to announce something here in the webinar, uh, not knowing already the history. And I don't have a back test. In this case, I don't use any back tests. I just trade. And um, 
I do it automatically, but um, <clears throat> you will see how it will um, run and the results are positive. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to achieve, but you will see. So the basic idea has to be pointed out a little bit more in detail and um, principle that is already uh, said now. It's a long short simultaneously strategy. So indeed we open two trades for one underlying, one long and one short trade. And we will manage those trades independently. And what's sound, what sounds weird that you do something like that long short at the same time, uh, you will see it will be profitable in this case. And the basic question behind which it should be answered first um, is what is a typical price move of a specific end underlying after some X minutes. So how far can a price from now in five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, one day move typically? Because that universal line will be the input for the later to be done uh, equations and uh, calculations. So the price movement is something which we we use here and there is a typical price movement over time if we disregard the direction um, and um, if we do that and we know that um, kind of behavior then we can pick the right underlines for that specific strategy because we we need uh, underlines which sh uh, show strong moves fast moves and uh, there are a couple of those, um, especially all related to Japanese yen, for example. But later you will see there are two even better. And um, those one will be um, yeah, the, the best one for that kind of strategy. We trade. And if we trade, we need targets, or so to say, uh, take profits for any trade. And um, how to determine that take profit level, we really do pure by mass. We do an, something like an optimization or finding a maximum of an equation. And that will tell us indeed where to put the take profit level of any trade. And that's one of the key aspects here to find that level. And we, in this case, it's not just saying, oh, let's go for a stop loss, uh, take profit level 1% above um, for a long trade, our entry point. No, it's, it's something which has to be optimized, but pure by pure applying mass. And since we enter trades, we need a stop loss as well, as always. No trade without stop loss. And we do later trade sequences. So we, we, we open a long and a short trade simultaneously. And of course, <laughs> only one of uh, the two can or will hit the take profit first. And the other one is in the minus. Um, so we have to manage our losing trades. So the ones who, who uh, are in the minus, at least temporarily, and Therefore, we, we uh, determine a so-called rebuy level. So we do something which is, once again, a little bit weird. We even rebuy in a loss. But still, if we have a stop loss for the overall trade, <clears throat> what I could later call trade sequence, then it's OK. Then you can do something like that. Um, but you need a stop loss. And that is uh, something really uh, necessary, as always. And finally, I show it directly in an MT4, how the strategy is running, and then you will even get more feeling about that kind of strategy. As I mentioned, for motivation first, here the equity. So as I mentioned, <clears throat> it's um, a little bit three weeks ago, I, I, I started uh, with the calculations. And uh, a week later, <clears throat> I was already able to put that strategy live. Live in this case means a demo account. Of course, uh, I always start with demo accounts when I, um, when I um, develop strategies. And what you see here are the first 14 days of that account. So, in total, 800 euros, um, and that was um, profit. That was yesterday 
uh, at 10 o'clock German time. Uh, you may think about the number or you may remind that number 800 uh, um, euros because later we go directly into the account and then we compare what has happened since yesterday morning. Um, <clears throat> you see already there are a lot of underlyings traded and we have um, a perfect increase in equity, so monthly growth up to now is 1.8%. Um, <clears throat> if that goes on, it would, will be a fantastic strategy. It's trading a lot, um, so um, that is something for which is specific for that kind of strategies, um, because you will see and learn <clears throat> that to take profit is extremely tight for any trade. So it looks good, it looks promising, Let's go into more details. So, as I mentioned, we open, when we start any underlying, we open two trades, one a long and a short trade, and on the same underlying. So, now we have two basic questions. Um, trades need to take profit, and we need that number. So, we have to calculate, in this case, we have really to calculate that kind of number. And I will show you uh, on, on what basis we are doing that kind of calculation. If we have a loser trade, we need a rebuy to, to recover. It's not martingale, it's a little bit like a grid strategy, but if you do it with a stop loss, a final stop loss, even if you increase your position size, then everything is okay. What do we trade? We always trade 0.02 lots in this case um, and that has a specific reason why I not go for the 0.01 it's a little bit related to to JFD um, you know that we have a standard commission of 5.5 um, um, euros per traded lot but unfortunately not if you go for the smallest unit <clears throat> which is 0.01 lot um, because then you will see uh, you have a commission of 0.06 um, euros, so six cents. Um, and since that strategy suffers from every cost, any costs like commission and spreads, um, we have really to do the optimum. So minimum lot size here for my, in my case is 0.02 instead of 0.01, simply to, to um, save that half euro per uh, lot traded. So that's the only reason. Otherwise, I would go in units of 0.01 lot in this case. So that's the principle of that kind of strategy. But now, the question is, how far is typical price moving after X minutes? And to, to tell you how I get those numbers, <clears throat> what I did is simply I uh, downloaded historical data, M5 data, um, with a history of 14 years, so really a long history uh, in numbers. That means it's about 1 million candles so it's a huge number so that's real statistics and now what we do here is simply that we go to some point in the history and then we ask how how far is the price moving after five minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes and we disregard the direction so we take the absolute uh, price change in, in percentage. Let me let me go to a chart here to, to illustrate a little bit what I'm doing. Um, and by the way, uh, that will be the account. We, we will have a deep look into uh, because that is a basket um, of uh, JFD. And um, yeah, we will look there uh, later. Uh, later means in two weeks from now. You see open positions, but that's not the topic of today. What I try to derive first is the question how far is the price moving after x minutes so once again how i did that i go to some point in the history let's say i go here to that candle you see my mouse cursor and that is the close value of that candle after five minutes the price has been here after 10 minutes here after 15 minutes here and so forth so and so, uh, so on and so forth. So that's the logic. And then I calculate everything for that point, then for this point, 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 and then I average over the complete history. So always 
taking an opening point and then looking after five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and so on and so forth. And then averaging over the 1 million candles. So what do I get? I get the complete average over time. Um, so I get not the time meaning years, um, um, year 2001, year 2010, and so on. No, the average, like, and you will see the results here. Um, it's a big table. I did that investigation for uh, 28 forex pairs and addi additionally for <clears throat> gold. And um, that's a strange symbol, I know, um, but uh, that's uh, the way <clears throat> where I get the data. Um, that is a DAX, uh, which is here called uh, GRX um, Euro. Indeed, this is a DAX, but um, that my dat data source um, uses that symbol name anyhow. So you see a big table. I know it's complicated. We, I show you the graphs. It's easier, but that you see the logic behind. Um, so for, for some calculations later, I need the exchange rate for a specific symbol. Um, the, the overall average, um, the average means in this case over 14 years. And then here you see those numbers. That is the percentage, the average percentage change after five minutes, this one after 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and so on. Visually, we get that kind of graph. So what you have here is the price move in percent after X minutes. And that's the average over the last 14 years for different symbols. Let's start with the, with the um, first one here. You see that one is exactly the DAX showing the highest movements versus time. So if you ask which underlying is moving the most or most far, the answer would be DAX. The next one would be gold. And then it would be um, a New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, and so on and so forth. You see that square root-like behavior. You see the, always the, the curve starts very steep, and then it flattens over time. That's indeed something which is to be expected here. And um, people who have seen already other webinars of mine know that if you describe that typical price change versus time, you can find that square root behavior. And in, in case it would be a perfect square root, and I fitted here already one of those, uh, I would forget which one, but I think it was yeah Euro, US dollar. And you see that we have an exponent, which is 0.5 and a little bit more. If it would be 0.5, then it would be an indication of a perfect random behavior because a random walker, a random movement um, would have an exponent of exactly 0.5. That we have a little bit more is good because otherwise it would be a first proof, not the final one, but the first proof that um, price movements are random. And if it would be random, we could not trade because randomness can um, yeah you cannot be overcome so you have would have no chance by by trading at all so that's a good thing that's not the perfect um, square root but we know that now that the typical price movement and we know it for every underlying and we need later exactly that kind of of um, functional behavior for our calculations so we up to now. Please remind it's like a square root, and the fastest moving underlying is a DAX, followed by um, gold and then uh, some Japanese um, uh, forex pairs. So that's the first step. So we know when we start looking to from 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 now, we can expect fast movements during the first couple of minutes and then it will flatten later. That's something we have to keep in mind. Let's do the next step. 
because we need that input now for the next step because what we now try to do is we want to try the right target for our long short trades and you see already something uh, here um, handwritten and I put it right uh, that we can read it but that was really what I have done um, on my hammock and um, <laughs> when I when I derived that kind of and develop that kind of strategy let me really start with this mess I know um, it's not something um, most famous for uh, many people but in this case I will do it and I hope you find it not too boring um, but it's, it's a central behavior for that kind of strategy what we can say is we know that the price is moving like that square root behavior so we have an a times square root of time but as you know when you open a trade you are instantly in the minus and that is meant with that g is a little bit uh, german here uh, stands for gebühr uh, which stands for costs so we have two kind of costs immediately when we open a trade we have spread and we have commission both we 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 have and every trade is instantly in the minus meaning if you open that long short combination we are even double in the minus because both trades have commission and spreads and that is already the minus let's think a moment that this behavior this time behavior would be the only and everything and no direction that would be the price versus time whenever we open a trade exactly what does it mean if we translate now the profit of a trade versus time so we would have at time zero we would be exactly at minus g because we have opened our trade and we realize our costs spread and commission with ongoing time we would reach um, more and more profit I know only if we are in the right direction but um, let's assume we are in the right direction and then we have that equation illustrating the profit of the trade it would increase with time and we would start in the minus at time zero okay that is a profit after a certain time if we now say okay after a certain time we close a trade in this case it would be a profitable trade uh, if we are uh, already above um, here zero if we wait a, a little bit more than uh, some time then we are already profitable but what if we now calculate that we close a trade after t zero and then open directly the next trade so think about how many trades do we do the day it would be exactly 1440 because that's the number of minutes uh, per day divided by this t0 because after t0 we close our trade it's, this is something like the, the, the frequency so um, because we close the trade after t0 then the number of trades per day would be 1440 divided by t0 since we want to calculate the profit per day we have to multiply this one with the profit of a single trade good so now we can insert that equation here the profit of a single trade into that equation so we put it here and you see the result here and um, if we multiply then we have finally this as a profit per day assuming that we are always in the right direction and for the loser trades we care later but um, we have now an equation um, which is related uh, one versus uh, square root of time minus something like um, one divided by t0 just by multiplying that equation so that is the profit per day for that kind of let's call it strategy or semi strategy because it's assuming that we are always in the right direction which is not true I know but we have to manage that later if that is a profit per day and now 
What comes next is, as always, as trader, we want to maximize our profit. So what we try to find is when to close a trade. And that means at what level, what should be our take profit level for that strategy. In order to maximize our profit per day, now it comes to what you have learned at school. Take that equation, derive the first derivative. Um, so um, we um, do the derivative versus time and set that to zero because we want to find the maximum of that um, equation, the profit per day. Doing the, uh, the first derivative here, uh, setting to zero and then solving the equation is straightforward. We can calculate the time when we reach the best level and that would be something like 2g um, divided by a uh, then square and if we put that number into our first equation then we get our take profit level and that take profit level is surprisingly exactly g which means the take profit level for our trades should be exactly the costs so that is interesting so the best take profit level for that kind of strategy strategy is exactly the cost itself so we open a trade i know then we are in the minus but the take profit for that specific trade we would set exactly to the costs let's do it a little bit more practically um, just already in a table to to get those numbers ready for our trading strategy i have another table here and what I put here already into the table, um, um, those um, investigated underlines, uh, the forex pairs and additionally ducks and gold. Then I put into calculation here the spreads for all those underlines and that are typical spreads. Uh, it's not the best spread, it's more a typical spread. <clears throat> spread. And then I did my math here already in order to calculate my spread for a 0.02 lot trade for all Forex and gold trades. The only one I um, calculated a little bit different was the DAX because for DAX the minimum lot size is 0.1 lot and the commission is uh, different. Um, the commission for a, a DAX trade with 0.2 one lot um, is uh, just two cents. So you you have here <clears throat> one column with all the spreads already in euro and then the commission. That means we can add up those two columns and then we have our costs for the applied lot size. Forex 0.02 um, gold is the same, 0.02 lot, and DAX is uh, 0.1 lot. And you see different numbers here. Um, it's always spread plus commission. Commission 0.11 uh, euro for all those because we trade 0.02 lot. And that are our costs per trade. But it's not only the costs, it's already the target. It's a take profit level, which we later use during our trading activities. So that is simply exactly the level for our take profit. Opening the trade, then setting the take profit at those numbers. Um, of course, you have to recalculate for the, the different uh, underlines, but um, here we have the numbers always in euro. So that is the, the number which should appear if you, you go in the chart and look for the take profit level uh, for that trade. So, so first step is done. We know where to set the take profit in order to maximize our profit per day. Good. That's the first huge step. But now we need something else because we know it was a little bit ideal. <laughs> I took those, um, sorry, I, up to now I assume that 
my price change uh, that I'm, I'm going always in the right direction and the price change would exactly follow <clears throat> that line but I only know that that is the average disregarding the direction but that is a typical behavior overall so we have loser trades as well because we open a long and a short trade simultaneously and uh, at least one is a um, little, little bit later when the first one hits take profit, the other one is definitely in the minus. The idea now is that we do a rebuy. Um, that is something which you can only do if you still have a, t a, a stop loss. But now we have a question. Where to set the rebuy level? Where to say, okay, loss is, is enough we should rebuy in order to get a better average entry price. If you do something like that, then you first have to say how much money are you willing to risk uh, for that kind of trade sequence. I call it trade sequence because we open a trade, the trade goes into the minus and we do a rebuy. And those two now are trade sequence and we do a second rebuy and the third and the fourth and so on. Still, we need a stop loss level and um, that, that's key that we do it. And in this case, I simply said, okay, I'm willing to risk 1,000 um, euros for any trade sequence. What I need now is, oh, I have to change that symbol here. Um, I have to say, since I do those rebuys, um, yeah, step by step, if I really, if the price is going totally to the long, to the wrong direction, then I do, um, we buy, we buy, we buy. I need something here to do that kind of calculation. Where to set the we buy level? And I said, okay, I'm willing to risk 1000 euro and I want to survive a total price change of 2%. Um, and since I do everything here on a really small time frame, 2% is already something. It's not um, uh, yeah, quite a small value, but it's not a real huge value. It's something in between. And now I want to calculate that rebuy level with those two numbers. Having in mind, I'm willing to risk 1,000 uh, 1, euro, and I accept price change of 2% in the wrong direction until I want to hit my stop loss level. To do that, we do a second step just in Excel. It's not complicated and it's a little bit illustrating what we are doing here if our trade is going to the minus. What I have done here uh, is the following. Um, I simulated a price change. So I started with something which is at price level one. Think that would be Euro, US dollar, I don't care. Um, anything like that. And that price is constantly going down, as you see, but in very small steps in this case, because I want to do it quite accurately. Since I open here virtually a long trade with 0.02 lot, you see, okay, I have already costs for the trade. In this case, uh, let's change it to, let's say, 0.4 euros, and I'm instantly in the minus. Um, so my total costs is uh, there. Therefore, when I open the trade, I have a total loss, when opened, already of uh, 40 cent. So now my trade goes against me. So price goes down. I have a long trade. Price goes down, down, down. And now the Excel sheet is uh, done in a way that I have here a loss trigger. So you will see I go down in the Excel sheet somewhere um, I reach my my uh, rebuy level and that is here. You see at that point in time my loss was already two euros and I do my rebuy. So I buy additionally uh, 0.02 lot long. Instantly I have costs and now the, it goes further. So you see what happens. Um, the rebuys will occur more and more frequent as you see during I move here down and finally I get something like this and now you can 
clearly see how I derive <coughs> my loss trigger, my rebuy level for um, those three trade sequences. You see, if I would do it like this here, I would rebuy in case of a loss of two euros, then if my price goes finally 2% against me, then my total loss would be, whoops, nearly 30,000 euro. That's a lot. So in order to, to survive <laughs> this kind of rebuy level, uh, I would need um, yeah, a stop loss level of uh, nearly 30,000 euros. That's too much. So let's do it different. I increase my rebuy level and you, you see what happens. If I don't if I if I rebuy at a higher level of three euros, then my total loss here goes down. And what I did is simply I went through that Excel sheet, and that was only because um, it was faster to do it by Excel than by equation. In principle, you can do this, that job here by equation as well, um, because that is the square root uh, behavior of um, <clears throat> the total loss within those 2%. And you see what happens if I go for a rebuy level of 8 euro. So if I wait always 8 euro additional losses uh, before I rebuy, now I can survive with my 1,000 euros um, a price change of 2% in the wrong direction. So that gives you already a number. Think about charts looking to movements of more than 2% in one direction. They will not occur that often um, without recovering in the time between. Um, and that's what we use here for uh, that kind of strategy. But you now see we can clearly derive that rebuy level for a given number of costs. But And in this case, I think the optimum number would be something like this here. Uh, 3 euros um, 73 cent for 0.4 uh, costs per trade. If I change the costs, um, it does not really change the picture heavily. So that kind of curve does not depend uh, strongly on, on, on the costs per trade. Um, so one could take those 8 euros for each underlying. Um, but um, I did it a little bit more more mathematically, so I have that kind of rebuy level specifically related to the costs per trade. I put all those numbers once again already in my final Excel sheet, and but we are not sure one step is still open. So you see here. I put already all my rebuy levels for the different underlyings in uh, that column. And you see those numbers does not, do not depend strongly on the cost per trade, which are different per each underlying, but um, we don't need uh, that much change for those rebuy levels. But now the question is, why did I highlight those eight symbols and put them exactly in that row and the answer is since we did something more by calculating the maximum profit per day we know something additional let me go to my handwritten paper here once again and you see finally here in the very end of, of the page i i calculated the profit per, uh, per day and you see it's related uh, something like A square divided by G, which have been the costs. So what does it tell you, that kind of equation? It tells you the, pros the, 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 the profit per day would be maximum or would be higher if the costs per trade go down, that we expected. Uh, lower costs is uh, higher profits as expected. But you see something else. We have that A square. What it was A? A was the one which describes my uh, is a prefactor from that square root behavior versus time. So what is tell me, telling me? The more strong my price change versus time for a specific underlying is, the better is my profit per day. So that's good. So let's let's find out exactly that a. 
for each underlying. So we need that A in order to, to, to find the best underlying for our trading activities here. But that's easy. So, you know, we, we have already the table, typical price movement versus time. And we know we have the typical square root behavior. But we, we need to find out that number, that prefactor. How to do? Quite easy. Since we know it's a square root behavior, we simply square those numbers. If you see what I have done here in the Excel sheet, I squared all those um, price changes. And if, I, if you do so, and now once again, you build a graph um, of that squared price change versus time, you get those straight lines, uh, which go through the origin and they are straight lines. It, the reason is because we are extremely close to that square root behavior. And now the slope here is exactly A, the one we want to derive that number. So squaring and then simply calculating the slope directly here in Excel is straightforward. And then we know for each underlying the prefactor A. For trading reasons, we have to, to apply the exchange rate, but that is something, uh, let's say, more, more in detail. Um, I took all those numbers of A, put them into my table, and then I'm done. You see, I put those A's here into the table, and then I calculated A square divided by G, because that is indicating which one has the best profit per day. And then I sorted my overall list exactly along that uh, value. The higher, the better. Yeah, and now you see why I go for DAX, gold, and so on and so forth. Because those promise me the highest profits per day. Now back to the trading activities. We open a long and a short trade. We set our take profit level like this one, directly <clears throat> calculated by knowing the spread of a specific underlying and knowing the commission for a specific underlying. That is a take profit level for each trade. And then we know for our loser trades where to rebuy in order to get or try to get those trades um, finally being winning trades once again. And that's how it works. I think it will be a little bit more obvious if you now go to live trading. And live trading is here that account. I will explain once again all uh, aspects of that kind of strategy. But let's first get the overall picture here. Uh, first thing, um, since we are traders, we are uh, keen to numbers. Uh, you know, <clears throat> yesterday morning, 800 and a little bit. Today, right now, 936 profit. Well, not that bad. Uh, so a little bit more than 100 uh, since yesterday morning. And that is indeed the average number here, uh, what we can achieve. You see a lot of funny lines here. Any line, any straight line in a chart is illustrating a trade. A green line is a winning trade. A red line is a loser trade. Let's start with something um, maybe a little bit more obvious, hopefully. Let me start with a DAX chart here. So let me zoom and still see both levels. So it's a long time ago that we have opened here at that level and it was here in time. At that point in time, I opened um, I opened a long trade. And there has already been another short sequence. So therefore, I did not open, in this case, still simultaneously. That kind of opening the both trades simultaneously is only at the very, very beginning when you really start that kind of activity. So what you see here. We, I opened here a long trade, 
And hmm, unfortunately, up to now, I have not hit my take profit level. There was another trade sequence ending here. And then here is still a short sequence open. That short sequence may get a take profit, uh, hopefully now in a minute. Now we got it. And you will see in, um, let me see. Oh, it will take 40 minutes, uh, 40 seconds in 40 seconds, because everything is running here on an M1 chart. In 40 seconds, <clears throat> strategy will open a new short trade. And right now, we are, we can directly see the loss, the loss of our DAX trade, because here you see we have a long trade running, 0.01 lot, and that trade has right now a loss of 6 euro, which is still below the rebuy level. So if the DAX would go a little bit further down, then we would see directly the rebuy of a long. We are already long here. And if we would hit um, that about 8 uh, euros for that loss, then we would rebuy the long. Now you see we opened a new short trade, um, always uh, um, at a given minute number. And now maybe already in a few seconds, that short trade will hit already the take profit. You see that the levels originally are extremely tight. And um, maybe even during speaking, we will realize that that trade will come to its take profit level. That's how the strategy really works. And it's quite easy to, to, to do something uh, with an expert advisor, which is done here, uh, to have that strategy up and running. And let's look a little bit about the downside of such a strategy. You can immediately realize what is the downside. The downside is always if an underlying goes more or less straight in one direction. We will get few, uh, yeah, some some winning trades during that sequence because we we, we go into the uh, uh, let's let's assume uh, we, we we something goes strictly south. Um, of course, we have always those small um, small winning trades. Um, going south because we are open short trades as well. But our long trade is getting more and more in the minus. The rebuy we, we are doing will increase our risk. But still, we have a stop loss. And that's good to have that stop loss uh, level. Originally, that stop loss is really far away. But when it comes um, to, to bigger sequences like this one here, Euro Japanese yen right now. Let's go into that one a little bit more uh, bigger here. So then you see already, oh, there have been al already lots of rebuys. Buy, 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 buy. Um, so now it's time that the price at least temporarily goes to the north, uh, reaching that take profit level here as well. So. If an underlying goes straight in one direction, finally, we will hit our stop loss level. But if it's only wiggling around, and the good thing is most underlyings do it, um, that's what you normally, um, when you trade, um, find not that good, that price is going up, down, up, down, up, down, and you are always in the wrong direction. For that kind of strategy, that behavior is perfect long movements in one direction like here in japanese yen um, they are a danger for that kind of strategy but still we have a stop loss and um, you see after mm, about two weeks i gained already 1000 euro at least i can now survive one stop loss level which would be okay um, then i still would be slightly in the plus, if it would not happen during the next couple of uh, minutes. But if it would happen tomorrow, <clears throat> definitely I'm still okay. So that's how the strategy works. 
And you see that different, or you will see, just a second here, um, let me refresh uh, that picture. So now we are at 936 euros um, right now. And I trade a lot of different symbols here. Um, and I changed the philosophy finally to to uh, to my my Excel sheet. Therefore, there are some underlines which are not traded anymore. And um, at least for the last um, two weeks, you see uh, best results. British pound, Japanese yen. Second is gold. Third is DAX. It's not exactly the 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 order um, like my Excel sheet, but maybe um, those two weeks are not uh, already statistics enough. Um, but anyhow, it's exactly going into that kind of direction um, that, um, yeah, the best one would be uh, around Japanese yen, DAX and GOAT. Um, and that's already confirmed here. You see uh, Euro, Japanese yen. Um, this one is uh, something different and this one as well. But it's already going into the right direction. So it's a real weird strategy. And no backtest, just derived by mass and nothing else. So that's how it works. And I think you got it, um, how it uh, it's done and how if you finally do a strategy like this, how you can calculate everything. And the good thing here and Honestly, this is the first and only up to now strategy which I derived totally without a chart, uh, just as an input costs per trade. And knowing what is a typical price movement, you, know, you may call that it was the input of a chart. Um, you're right, but um, that is uh, simply statistics doing or deriving <clears throat> that typical price change versus time. And we need that in order to calculate um, 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 which underlyings would be the best for that kind of strategy. So in a nutshell, we know the price change versus time is um, something close to square root, and that's the base for that strategy. We know which underlyings move strongest, DAX, gold, Japanese yen, and those are the one which move more strong than any other. And now we calculate the take profit level out of that, out of the costs, and we take we calculate the rebuy levels exactly out of um, what we accept as a maximum loss within a typical maximum price change. Those two numbers, the 1,000 euro, and the other has been the 2%. Initially, when we start, we open a long and a short simultaneously. Later, um, you will see one goes into take profit or maybe stop loss. Um, and then a minute later, I open simply the next short or short, which, which one has hit the take profit level before. So then I talk always about trade sequences. And those trade sequences are managed independently with stop loss level and take profit level. And everything is always for a complete sequence. So um, the take profit level is always meant to all short trades or all long trades, same for the stop loss. So we, we have uh, always only one take profit for each direction. Those trade sequences are managed individually and that gives finally a very interesting um, equity curve let me see what happens with that strategy during the next couple of weeks i still will run it i will report on that uh, you can be sure and yeah the real funny thing about that overall strategy pure mass pure statistics no chart no resistance line no um, ema nothing nothing like that price only that's all i hope you enjoy it um even something really weird like this one here um next time we will talk about the basket investor and how to manage a portfolio of 
strategies. So I not only want to report above, uh, about the basket in Restaurant itself, also the logics behind. So that's always possible to learn something, how to manage risk, how to set up and create a portfolio if you have more strategies than one, um, then you have to care about something like that as well. So that we will learn in two weeks from now. But once again, please look to the JFD webpage. You find a couple of interesting webinars from my colleagues as well. Uh, I know that um, there are great webinars, totally different topics always. And uh, so you can enjoy those as well. And you can find all the recordings on the JFD YouTube channel. If you are interested in Excel sheets, for, uh, which I showed today, uh, just send me an email to s.friedrichowski, really complicate, I know, at jfdbrokers.com. And I will make sure that you will get those Excel sheets um, already tomorrow. That's from now. Enjoy your time. Enjoy the evening. And hopefully see you next time in two weeks. Bye-bye.